Today we're looking at a pretty recently released piece of gear from Cindy Audio. It's called the Peacock. This is a large format um, open back uh, planar headphone, over the ear headphone. As you guys know, I, I tend to you know sort of look for great pieces of used gear, things that have been out for a while, but still are really relevant and interesting to me. But this is, like I said, a, a brand new headphone uh, from Cindy, which is a um, sub-brand of Sivga, uh, uh, both uh, Chinese companies in southern China and Dongwang near Shenzhen, um, which is a major area for um, uh, consumer, electronics, consumer electronics manufacturing. And uh, these guys are very interesting because they use a lot of wood, which is not super common for, for Chinese manufacturing technique. Um, and they've come out with a handful of headphones uh, in the past few years that have uh, gotten some acclaim and, and notoriety. Uh, you know, it's very hard, I think, being a new brand and being a Chinese brand to sort of, uh, you know, gain gain admiration within the audiophile world. Um, but these guys seem to be kind of clawing their way at it. I don't think that everything they put out is a, is a winner, and they certainly have some sort of mass market stuff in the, in the Civca brand. But the Cindy stuff seems to be kind of their their nicer items. A lot of the stuff is very similar between the two brands, but you know sometimes they'll do a material or a finish or just a branding change on it. These come in a very nice box with the travel case and stuff. I did, I kind of like recorded opening it up. I don't really do like unboxing things, but I'll put that footage at the end here if you all want to see all the accessories, which are very nice. I think that this brand really tries to emphasize that experience and give you a very nice like set of gear so the cables it comes with and everything are, are i think pretty nice the headphones look and feel um pretty solid i mean there's some aesthetic design choices that are maybe not to my i mean it's a lot of look <laughs> it's it's a it's a lot of look the the high contrast stitching the the you know golden rim and the peacock feather inspire pattern and the you know designed by Cindy Audio etched into the wood cup and quad former I mean it's just a lot it's a lot of stuff um, but they are very comfortable on the head this this suspension strap system is very nice um, and then you know um, you got adjustability as well um, but you know it's got this cool little padding uh, and you know as best as I can tell this stuff is 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 real real leather at least if it's synthetic it feels very good. Um, they've got this kind of weird pad shape that I think I've seen on some of their other headphones. Um, I, it, it looks wrong and you're like, shouldn't these swivel? And they don't. And then you put it on your head and you're like, ah, interesting. So somehow it, it works, but it's very counterintuitive to me. Um, anyway, uh, but like I said, they're very comfortable. They're definitely an all day wearable headphone. Um, they utilize my, you know, one of my least favorite connectors this is the same stuff you find on dan clark audio and um maybe a few other folks but it's this little push pull four pin guy um it's just a little fiddly to get on and off i mean once it's on there it's very secure but it's not my favorite um and also just i don't, I don't really have a lot of cables that fit that so in the aftermarket that's such a small percentage of what's available so it's just kind of it's kind of irritating when when people kind of won't use a more standard format like a 3.5 inch or a um you know, mini XLR or something. Uh, anyway, what do, what do they sound like? So I listened to them with a bunch of different um, sources and a bunch of different amps. Um, they're not very, they're not terribly hard to drive in my experience, although they, they certainly do appreciate an amp, a little juice if, if you want to, if you want to push it. Um, I think when I first put them on, impressions were like, you know, oh, these are like very smooth. They're like, they're very, they got some warmth and some richness and they're sort of a forgiving headphone, right? There's, I think a lot of, so first of all, this is not a cheap headphone. So despite the fact that this was from a, a, a newer Chinese brand, they're coming in to a competitive part of the market at 1500 bucks MSRP, right? So that's got you competing with some offerings from Haifamen and Odyssey and Dan Clark Audio. And, you know, there's some, some big boy headphones in this, in this price tier. Um, so these guys are definitely coming in, coming in swinging as it were. Um, and so with a lot of headphones at, you know, at this price point, really anything above like 800 bucks and up, you start to, headphones start to sort of 
fall into a couple of categories, but the primary one is ones that really want to like prove their capabilities to you, right? You, they want when you put them on, you to immediately get that spark of like, oh, this is a high end piece of gear. I know it because it's sparkly. I, I hear things, things are jumping out, details are, are you know, I'm, I'm getting stuff. Um, and I understand that. I think that's reasonable, right? That good gear should be very resolving and bring a lot of interest and detail. But um, I don't know that I want everything to have the exact same taste and flavor. And so I think it's it's somewhat brave of these guys to go a bit of a different direction and focus a little bit more on, on sort of fluidity and, um, like I said, a sort of a richer, more kind of velvety, more relaxed um, sound signature at this price point. Um, but, you know, I think, so I got these right out of the box. I put them on, I had these impressions. Um, and then I just, I took them off and I let them burn in for a while. Um, and I don't, I don't have some mixed feelings about burning in and whether that's a real thing. I know your brain burns in if you listen to stuff, but you know, I think for, for, uh, all driver types, a little bit of time to sort of run. And, you know, if they're designed to last for thousands and thousands of hours, it's reasonable, just like pretty much any me mechanic, mechanical item or, um, mechanical, electromechanical item that it would need a minute to sort of get within tolerance. So, you know, let it, let it run for a few dozen hours and put them on. Um, and they seemed quite a bit tighter to me. They seemed more exacting. Uh, the, the, the sort of softness and the smoothness was, was still very much their, their overarching signature, but, um, but there's, there's more there for me. And I think what's interesting with these is if you, if your source is good, like if you, if you have a DAC that's relatively well resolving and you have an amp, um, that's not too warm, that's sort of cleaner sound, there's plenty of texture and detail here as you spend time with them, as you let your brain sort of sink into them. Um, but like I said, it's, it's more sort of the details are interwoven into the music rather than like pulled out, separated and handed to you, or, or in some case of some headphones, like shoved down your ears. Um, and I like that. I mean, this, it's really nice. If you or someone like me that listens to a lot of music while you work and like sometimes you really want to focus on it sometimes you kind of want to just let it be there as, as background because you're you know writing or doing something that that takes similar parts of your brain um some headphones you just can't do that with and these you can and and i think like i i am a self-proclaimed audio nerd obviously i make these videos which is a ridiculous use of time but um and, and i and i and i love technical gear that just like wows you and like shows you it's how capable it is of like finding little nuances and things you didn't even know is in music you've listened to you know hundreds or thousands of times before I like that stuff um but sometimes that just is like that that becomes the activity the, the activity becomes listening to the gear not listening to the music and I think this is a pair of headphones that that really helps you listen to listen to the music. And I, I think that's a, a really admirable quality, especially at this price point to sort of want to make something that, that feels really, really enjoyable for long-term listening. And that isn't trying to show off all the time. Uh, just to kind of run through the, the, the tonal range real quickly, the highs I would describe as unsurprisingly sort of easy going, but there's good definition there and it's not fatiguing. It's all day listening. The upper mids, I'd say, um, they can use a little more energy. I think that's maybe one of my gripes is like, I feel like the upper mids need just, just wake up just a tiny bit. Um, the mids are just full bodied. Um, but there's a little like pocket of space around them, which is kind of interesting. So like mid tone vocalists and stuff really have a bit of room around them between them and more of the instrumentation. And I, I really like the mids. They're really satisfying. Um, the lower mids, um, are thick, you know, uh, that's often, when we sort of think of a warm uh, sound, like that's usually like the sort of thicker mid, mid, lower mids and upper region of the bass area, that, that sort of fullness, um, you know, these things definitely carry their weight down there for sure. Um, the bass is, is plentiful. It's rich. Um, it's not as tight as some other headphones. It, there's lots of rumble to enjoy but it's not maybe as snappy and fast and defined as, as some of the better bass rendering headphones uh, that I've heard. Uh, the, I think the sound stage strikes a, strikes a pretty good balance between being um, open enough to give you a sense of the room, a sense of the space, but not being like so exaggerated and hyper 3D as to sort of make you feel like you're floating around in it. I mean, sometimes that's fun, um, but I think it's, it's a very 
for me, it's a very natural. It's not close and not overly intimate, but it's not giant and, and sort of lost in space feeling. Um, pairing wise, it was pretty flexible. Headphone ran on a lot of amps. Pretty happy. I think it, it doesn't like warm on warm. So if you have like a really warm DAC or you have a really warm amp in front of it, I don't think that's going to get you to the best and most interesting place. I think something that's that's pushing separation and pushing clarity and 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 sort of a bit cleaner and focused you know chain up front is going to be the better pairing for this um yeah as as i mentioned i think there's a lot of competition at this price point for open back large format over ear open back planar headphones i think there's a lot of stuff out there that that's worth considering from you know kennerton and uh, dan clark audio and hyphaman and um odyssey and all these guys i'd say if, like based on what i have heard i feel like these are probably closer to odyssey maybe than some of the other house sounds um maybe to like kennerton or lsa stuff as well um folks that don't mind a bit of you know sort of warmth and smoothness rather than uh, house sounds that are trying to push and pull and be more dramatic and 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 have you know sort of lighter touch um, sort of sound profiles um I I think if you are interested in a headphone that you can really sink into and enjoy the music, that's something that's non-fatiguing, that you can listen to all day and enjoy, it's not boring, but it's also not trying to prove itself all the time, um, then this is this is a pretty cool headphone and, and worth consideration. Uh, I think if you are interested in something that's sort of really like energetic and impactful and sort of has a as, as, as a more analytical sort of approach I, I probably shy away from this i don't think this is the kind of thing that's going to satisfy you um but yeah if you're just kind of wanting to just chill with the music but not you know not be bored or not feel like you're missing out on detail um i think this is a really nice balance of of those two sort of sides of the audiophile world so that's we're going to end it there we're going to call it there um like i said i'll i'll tack on uh, the uh, unboxing <laughs> footage in a sec here if you want to kind of see all the accessories it comes with. Uh, but until next time, this is Signcraft signing out. All right, the Cindy Audio Peacock. Let's see what we got. So this came shrink-wrapped. Open that already. Oh, nice little box, little foam there to protect this case. Oh, look at that. And actually it looks really nice in person. Like these little brass bits. So get rid of this guy for a sec. And this is the travel case, I guess. <laughs> this little look. I guess that's how it stands up. It's cute. Oh, look at this. This feels very much like I need to be uh, on some high street in some town doing a little shopping. My little man purse here. And there they are. Ooh. It's <laughs> a lot of bling. That's a lot of bling. Wow. The wood looks really nice. Really nice. The grill is, is, a, is peacocky. I get it. There's the end tag of those guys. That's interesting, isn't it? The, sh the shape seems a bit odd. I wonder if it's really meant to be sort of turned. Well, I guess not. Oh, that's bizarre. Okay, I'll have to check, see how that feels. There's a little hinges are really nice this looks to be you know all, all aluminum very very nice and the stitching is really pretty those are pretty cool and then along with that I get this little little cute bag here and ooh, we'll see what the cable situation is here all right First off, bags instead of bags instead of bags, protecting the jewelry. You got a nice little, oh, that's come into focus. This little adapter, I guess that's the balanced adapter. I assume that's going to be 4.4 into there. Here's the, again, bags instead of bags instead of bags. Here's just the uh, standard uh, quarter inch. Nice. And then this is going to be the primary cable. All right.
right, let's get some stuff out of here. This guy has got a nice little wood branch there. And then, yeah, there we go. That's our, uh, our balanced end there, 4-4. Four, four. So that's cool. So I guess natively, if you've got the balanced input for that, you're, you're, you're good to go right out of the box. And then if you need to move over to uh, four pin XLR, which I would need to do. You got that guy. That's not too bad. It's not a horrible dongle. I don't mind it. It's funny that this has a different pattern than the adapters. Must be intentional. Everything here seems very thought through, aesthetically speaking. And then, I mean, that red and blue are like kind of a lot. <laughs> everything else is kind of going for a sophisticated vibe. And these are the little, like the um, Dan Clark audio style little, I forget what you call these ones but the little four pins. They're kind of nice because they feel really secure on it, but they're kind of annoying because, you know, you're not going to have any replacement cable, or you're not going to have as many replacement cable options. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the quick, uh, quick unboxing, as it were, with the cables. Yeah, cool. Cheers.